Another fun filled episode of Storytime Anytime. Sorry about that. I'm on a construction site today. We're building a building. Ha, <laughs> that sounds funny. Building a building. Have you ever seen a building so tall that it looked like it went all the way up into the clouds? Huge machines like dump trucks, cranes, drills, cement mixers, and steamrollers help build everything around you. Today, we're going to learn about these friends of ours. Trucks, tractors, forklifts, and bulldozers, too. Any huge machine I'd like. How about you? This is a tractor. It has four big wheels. Farmers use tractors to plow their fields. This is a loader. It's yellow and green. With its huge bucket, it's a powerful machine. Trucks, tractors, forklifts, and bulldozers too. Any huge machine I like. How about you? This is a truck. It has 18 wheels. This big rig hauls pigs that like to squeal. This is a forklift. It lifts bales of hay. It really helps farmers have an easier day. Trucks, tractors, forklifts, and bulldozers too. Any huge machine I like. How about you? This is a combine. It cuts and gathers wheat. Harvesting a crop this way can't be beat. This is a bulldozer. Moving dirt is its thing. When it does a job, it is not very clean. Trucks, tractors, forklifts, and bulldozers too. Any huge machine I like. How about you?
the highway, listen to the engine roar. The 18 wheeler with the tractor and trailer, which will storm tons of heavy cargo from cars to food logs. These big rigs carry anything from cattle to noisy hogs. Traveling down the highway, the driver sits up high. From the cab, he watches the countryside pass on by. He motions to his partner, asleep behind his seat. He points to a little restaurant for his time to eat. They call them Big Rigs, Big Rigs, cargo carrying machines. Big Rigs, Big Rigs, the biggest truck with 18 wheels that doesn't use gasoline. Now Big Rigs are mighty thirsty, but they don't use any gasoline. For diesel fuel is used to operate these big machines. Fumes escape from the smokestacks and make a growling sound. The truckers call this barking as they drive their trucks around. Truckers talk on CBs and warn others to back down, which means to watch the speed limit for the police are all around. They warn each other on accidents and tell of Smokey Bear. That's the name they give state troopers so truckers can be where they call them. Big rigs, big rigs, cargo carrying machines. Big rigs, big rigs, the biggest truck with 18 wheels that doesn't use gasoline. From refrigerated reefers that carry fresh fruit Flatbed semis are low boys, which are low to the ground. Dump trailers can be tilted to unload a ton of sand. These 18-wheelers are impressive, now I'm sure you'll understand. So when you are traveling and a trucker passes by, wave your hands and give a shout for your food he will supply. Big rigs keep our country supplied with needed goods. It's an important occupation. Interesting livelihood, they call them Big Rigs, ah, yes. Big Rigs, cargo carrying machines. They carry everything. Big They're rigs, really noisy big and really big. Rigs, the biggest truck with 18 wheels that doesn't use gasoline. An important occupation, an interesting livelihood, they call them Big Rigs. I went to school just the other day and my teacher said to me have you thought about when you grow up what do you want to be so I thought and I thought what do I want to be a doctor or a dentist a machinist apprentice I don't know what I want to be so we read some books about helping like policemen and firefighters do and talked about teachers and vets for pets now what do I want to do so I thought and I thought what do I want to be a pilot or a teacher a lawyer or a preacher I don't know what I want to be then on the way as I was walking home I saw the most wonderful sight A man was riding this huge machine With teeth like I'd never seen So I thought, hmm, and I thought What do I want to be? A baker or a writer, a fearless firefighter I know now what I want to be So I went to school the very next day And my teacher said to me have you thought about when you grow up what do you want to be yes i thought and i thought and i know what i will be i'll grab a hard hat put my lunch in a brown sack a bulldozer operator i will be for our next story we're going to learn about dumpy He's a dump truck who loves to work on construction sites. 
But one day, Dumpy learns that he's not the biggest, fastest, strongest, or the newest dump truck in town. Let's find out what happens when Dumpy decides to not compare himself to others. Dumpy the Dump Truck Dumpy the Dump Truck lived in a granite quarry. How he loved his work! Nothing made him happier than to carry a big load of rock and dump it into a great big pile. Dumpy was proud of his work, too. It made him feel very special and important. One morning, Dumpy's driver Joe came to work early. We've got to haul some gravel today, he said. We'll have to make several trips, though. It's a big job. Fine with me, Dumpy wanted to tell Joe. I am big and I can do a big job. Joe shifted Dumpy's gears. This is a big hill, thought Dumpy, but I am big and I can climb it. Honk, honk! Out on the road, a huge truck honked at Dumpy to pull over so he could get by. Look at me, boasted the truck. I can carry a whole house. I'm much bigger than you. Soon, Dumpy reached the job site. Sadly, he dumped his load of gravel. I thought I was big, Dumpy cried, but that truck was much bigger. I guess I'm just a little dump truck after all. Whistling a happy tune, Joe drove Dumpy back to the granite quarry for another load. After a while, Dumpy began to feel better. I may not be big, he decided, but I am really strong. And by the time Dumpy was loaded up, he was happy again. Come on, Joe, he wanted to say. I can carry more than that. Roar! On a corner lot, Dumpy saw a huge crane working on a new office building. Look at me, shouted the crane. I can lift these heavy metal beams a hundred feet into the air. I'm much stronger than you. When Dumpy reached the job site, he felt so bad he didn't even enjoy dumping his load of gravel. I thought I was strong, he cried, but that crane was much stronger. I guess I'm just a weak little dump truck after all. On the way back to the granite quarry, Dumpy felt sadder than ever. But after a while, Joe's cheerful whistling began to make him feel better. I may not be big, and I may not be strong, he decided. But I am really fast. Vroom! Out on the road, an ambulance zoomed by, its red light flashing. It was taking someone to the hospital and was going much too fast to even speak to Dumpy. Wow, thought Dumpy, that ambulance was really fast. And when Dumpy dumped his load of gravel at the job site, he felt slow and clumsy. I guess I'm just a slow little dump truck after all, he decided. Back at the granite quarry, Dumpy felt so sad. He didn't even enjoy the gravel pouring into his truck bed like he usually did. Everyone is bigger and stronger and faster than I am, he whined. Suddenly, he didn't feel special or important at all. Come on, Dumpy, said Joe happily. Only one more load to go. Beep, beep. At the stoplight, a little red car pulled up next to Dumpy. She looked over at Dumpy and frowned. Dumpy was so dusty and muddy by now, you could hardly tell what color he was. See how shiny I am, bragged the little car. See my glossy red paint? I'm brand new. When the light changed, the little red car sped off, leaving Dumpy in a cloud of fumes. 
When Dumpy reached the job site, he felt very down. How wonderful it would be to have a shiny new coat of paint, he thought, sighing. Suddenly, he heard Joe's voice. Look, Dumpy! Where was Joe? Dumpy looked up. There was Joe! He was standing on top of the biggest pile of gravel Dumpy had ever seen. Good job, Dumpy, said Joe. Did I do that, thought Dumpy. He could hardly believe his eyes. He had been so busy comparing himself to all the others, he hadn't paid attention to all the work he was doing. It's as big as a mountain, thought Dumpy. It had taken him many trips. And it had taken him all day long. But Dumpy thought it was the biggest, most beautiful pile of gravel he had ever seen. That night, Dumpy sat in his garage at the granite quarry. I may not be the biggest, the fastest, the strongest, or the newest, he thought. But I sure can get the job done. And so, feeling very special and important, he went to sleep with a great big smile on his face. For our last story, we race along with Sammy the Steamroller when Bob the Engineer tells his crew about their important jobs. Sammy the Steamroller Sammy the Steamroller was fast asleep in the garage, dreaming about rolling over long roads and wide streets, making them as smooth as could be, when Engineer Bob rang the morning bell. It's time to wake up, he called. We have a job to do. Is it morning already? sighed Connie the Crane. I was having such a nice dream. Me too added Dan the Drill as he let out a great big yawn. I wish I could go back to sleep. All of the other machines in the garage like to sleep better than they like to work. But not Sammy. He loved going to work. That was his favorite thing to do. Engineer Bob smiled. You're always first, Sammy, he said, as Sammy's rollers shined brightly in the morning sun but your job comes last. You'll have to go to the back of the line. That's right, Sammy, said Bill the Bulldozer as he chugged out a big puff of smoke. Now move along. Sadly, Sammy went to the back of the line and watched as the other machines moved ahead of him. Then Engineer Bob climbed aboard Charlie the Cement Mixer and, with the other machines behind him, made his way through town to Main Street. We have a lot of work ahead of us, said Bob. It's our job to make Main Street look like new again, so everyone get to work. And everyone did except for Sammy, who had nothing to do but watch as all of the other machines got started doing their jobs. Need any help, Dan? asked Sammy as Dan the Drill busily went about drilling up big piles of rock and cement. You can't help me, he laughed. You're only a steamroller. All you do is roll back and forth while I spend my time digging up the big pieces of rock. I don't have time to talk to you now. I have work to do. All I wanted to do was help, sighed Sammy, as he made his way over to Connie the Crane. Want me to help lift some of those big rocks for you? asked Sammy. Who said that? asked Connie as she lifted a chunk of cement high in the sky. Oh, it's only you, Sammy. What are you doing here? This is no place for a steamroller. Move out of the way before you get hurt. Sammy quickly moved out of her way. At the other end of Main Street was Bill the Bulldozer. Sammy thought that he might need some help. 
What are you doing, Bill? asked Sammy as he rolled on by. I was trying to knock down some of these old buildings so that we can make Main Street a little wider, said Bill, who was a bit out of breath from all the work he was doing. But I can't do that if I stand here talking to you. And with that, Bill pushed on, leaving Sammy standing by himself, wondering what to do. Down the street a bit, Sammy heard Charlie, the cement mixer. Maybe he needs some help, thought Sammy. Engineer Bob had made neat piles of cement to put into Charlie's mixer. Sammy tried his best to pick up some of the piles, but all he did was make a giant mess of things. Now look what you've done, cried Charlie. You've ruined everything. Well, that won't happen anymore, sighed Sammy, as he sadly rolled away from Charlie and all of the other machines. I'm not staying where I'm not wanted. It was almost evening when Engineer Bob blew his whistle. Great job, everyone, he called as all of the machines gathered around him. There's only one thing left to do, and we need Sammy to do it. But when Engineer Bob looked around, he didn't see Sammy. I wonder where he could be, he said. It's not like Sammy to leave a job. He was here just a minute ago, said Connie the Crane. I saw him rolling off towards the garage, said Dan the Drill. With all of the machines behind him, Engineer Bob raced back to the garage. When he got there, he saw Sammy sitting by himself, wiping the tears from his eyes. I guess you're all done with the job, sniffled Sammy. Not yet, said Engineer Bob. We still have the most important part left to do. The ground is clear, the cement is down, now all we need is someone to smooth out the road. That's my job, shouted Sammy as the other machines got in line behind him. That's right, added Charlie, so lead the way. In no time at all, Sammy was back on Main Street, happily smoothing out the road. When he was done, Engineer Bob painted a line down the middle. That night, Sammy went to sleep with a smile on his face, knowing that though his job may be the last one to be done, it's just as important as all of the others. Even though Sammy's job came last, he learns that his talent and job is just as important as everyone else's. This has been brought to you by Twin Sisters Digital Media and Evergreen Podcasts. Be sure to hit subscribe. If your children enjoyed these songs and stories, go to TwinSisters.com to find even more ways for them to sing and learn. Be sure to subscribe to our newsletter for our free download of the day giveaways and promotions on exciting new digital learning content like these and much more. And visit our friends at evergreenpodcasts.com. Thank you for joining us at Storytime Anytime.